in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed our concept of the supernatural to be that which is sponsored for a supernatural manifestation to be called godly listen carefully for a supernatural manifestation to be called godly there must be the union of the word of god and the ministry of the holy spirit listen carefully the holy spirit is not the only spirit available to produce supernatural manifestations but for any occurrence to be referred to as godly godly means it sustains within that experience the capacity to reveal and to glorify jesus this is our concept of godliness any manifestation that does not capture within itself the ability to reveal the christ if the revelation of the christ is bankrupt in that experience it may be supernatural but not godly are we together so for any supernatural manifestation to be called godly we must see the interplay of the word of god and the ministry of the holy spirit and ultimately the revelation of the christ must be established through that manifestation are we fine on that so the supernatural is an interplay between the word of god and the Spirit of God, the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Another way to express it is that the supernatural is an interplay between faith and the anointing. You want to write that down, an interplay between faith and the anointing. This again has been an age-long argument, especially among Pentecostals and Charismatics, as to which should be preferred. Should I choose faith or I should choose the anointing? So there are people who respectfully will say, I am a faith person. Mine is faith. There are others who say, well, I am an anointing person. Mine is anointing. That dichotomy was never designed to be so from scripture. It is always a, an interplay between faith and the anointing. Are we together? The assignment of faith is to connect you to the power of God. The very agency that produces that outcome is the anointing are we together the bible says according as his divine power hath given us all things is that true that pertains unto life and godliness so it's very very important for us to understand i'm doing a crash course my apologies we have just 30 minutes and so uh, let me recap on all that i've said number one that the supernatural has to do with any manifestation and any occurrence that is beyond the realm of science, beyond the realm of logic, and above and beyond natural laws. When it does not follow the natural course of occurrences, it is the supernatural. And that generically speaking, when we talk of the supernatural, we do not just limit it to a godly experience. A demonic experience can be called a supernatural experience. But that according to scripture, for any supernatural occurrence to be called godly, number one, we must see the word of God at work. Number two, we must see the ministry of the Holy Spirit at work. And then number three, we must see the revelation of the Christ through that occurrence. Are we together? And then it's important for us to know that Without the supernatural, there are many things that will not be able to happen as far as kingdom advance is concerned in our world today. Is it biblical to walk in the supernatural? Is it biblical to desire the supernatural? If God has given us access to science, if God has given us access to logic through reasoning, 
if our world has natural laws why then do we desire to be able to access realities above and beyond the realm of science hallelujah is it biblical to walk in the supernatural i can spend a whole day showing you from genesis to revelation different incidences that endorse promote and even provoke the supernatural from genesis 1 verse 1 down to revelations 22 every other thing you find there is a manifestation of the supernatural for instance genesis 1 verse 1 the bible says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that is a very supernatural statement because if you probe into that statement for him to create the heavens and the earth meaning he was not in any of them you cannot create something within a system you have to be outside the system for that creation to happen so where was he if he created the heavens and the earth it means he was not in heaven there nor the earth that is already a supernatural statement verse 2 says and then darkness was upon the face of the deep is that true and the spirit of god hovered round the face of the waters another supernatural occurrence what led to the darkness is a long story that we may not be able to touch now and then the bible says there was darkness across the whole earth verse 3 another supernatural statement and god said let there be light the hebrew expression is and the talking spirit said light be light be are we together and then the bible says and there was and he saw that the light was good so you read the entire genesis 1 and it was everything supernatural let us make man in our own image and after our likeness and let them have dominion so is it biblical how about the immaculate conception as we call it theologically of jesus christ a young virgin is espoused to joseph preparing for her wedding like any young lady would with joy and peace and she suddenly receives a visitation from an angel with a strange salutation you find that in mark chapter 1 by the time you read from verse 28 that is the context 28 and you find out that there was a very strange salutation the angel comes to her and is it mark luke mark or luke luke that should be luke please give it to us i hope i got that right luke chapter 1 please find it for me the discourse between um mary and that should be luke huh yes the angel came to her and said hail mary thou that are highly favored the lord is with thee blessed are you among women and the bible says mary wondered at what salutation this was and now he began to tell her that she would have a child verse 30 now and that he would call her the child jesus for he will be the savior of the world and then she asked a very very interesting question in verse 33 verse 33 he said he shall reign over the house of jacob and of his kingdom let's go to 34 now i'm just rushing mary said unto the angel how shall these things be seeing that i'm a virgin seeing that i know not a man i'm just showing you the supernatural how will it happen i'm an adult i'm intelligent enough i know that reproduction is the only way we have been given you know reproduction is the only way i can have another child now you don't seem to talk about any man in the picture not even my husband to be and you are telling me that i'm going to have a child how will it be the answer was in verse 35 he says the power of the highest the holy ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of god so we see scattered across the scripture the supernatural and mary said be it unto me according to your word she became pregnant instantly instantly that was the moment of conception the moment she agreed that was it are we together when jesus arrived 
His arrival was very strange and the many occurrences around his life very strange. When he began his ministry, he made reference according to Luke chapter 4. When you read from verse 15, the Bible says he entered the temple and the scroll of Isaiah was given to him to read. And he began to read, making reference to Isaiah 61, the messianic prophecy. That the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he said. Because he had anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, and so on and so forth. And then he told them, this scripture is today fulfilled in your ears. And in one of the synoptic accounts, the Bible says there was a man with a withered hand. And he looked at that man and said, to announce my messiahship, stretch forth your hand. And immediately that man was healed. Are we together? Yes. When you read Mark chapter 1, beginning say from verse 33 thereabout, the Bible says when the evening was come, they gathered to him all kinds of people, people who were sick, people who had all kinds of bodily infirmities, and the whole city was gathered about the door. Then the Bible says he began to heal many and to deliver those who had palsies and all kinds of sicknesses. And you read down to verse 37 of Mark chapter 1. People began to pursue him and the testament there was that all men seek for you because of the presence of the supernatural. Nobody will look for you until they believe that you have supernatural solutions that can solve their problems. Are we together? very important so we've established the fact that the supernatural is biblical it is not only biblical to experience it we it is it is God's desire for us to even walk in it in Matthew chapter 10 when you read verse 1 Jesus himself was sending the disciples and he made a statement please give it to us Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1 then we'll jump to 7 and 8 the Bible says when he had called unto himself the 12 disciples he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases verse 7 now he said as ye go preach saying this is the message now that the kingdom of heaven is at hand meaning it is now within your reach and prove the validity of the kingdom by doing the following heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely you have received he said freely give in John chapter 4 and verse 48 please give it to us John 4 48 Jesus had something very interesting to say he said except you see signs and wonders he was speaking he said ye shall not believe except not just except you hear the message except you see the manifestation of the supernatural hallelujah in John chapter 20 and verse 30, John 20 and verse 30, John was recording his version of the gospel and hear what John had to say. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. That means the miracles of Jesus that you see is not all that he did. There were many, many more. Is that true? Verse 31, he said, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing you might have life through his name. Are we still together? Very, very important. Let's go to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, we'll read from verse 5 to 8. Let me quote while they find it. The Bible says, Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto the people. Very interesting now. Philip went to preach Christ unto the people in Samaria. And the Bible says the people were in one accord. They listened very closely. The Bible says hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. He did not just go and preach an empty message. He preached Christ and the people gave heed with one accord, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. What were the miracles? Verse 7, he said, For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many that were taken with palsies that were lame were healed. As a result, verse 8, there was great joy in that city. Great joy in that city 
Now let me give you one scripture that should be a seal as far as the validity of the supernatural is concerned. Romans chapter 15 and verse 19. This is Paul himself speaking. I found this scripture many years ago and it, it just solidified my sincere pursuit for the supernatural. Can we read it together? The word I there is Illyricum. It's a very difficult word to pronounce. You have to practice by reading it again and again. So I'm just giving you a teaser up front or you can jump it when you get there. Ready? One to read. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel. That means the gospel is not complete until there is a dimension of signs and wonders. It says through mighty signs and wonders. From Jerusalem to Illyricum. Every time I traveled, it was not just to communicate an empty message. Hallelujah. Many have not fully preached the gospel. Because it's been a gospel that has been bankrupt of the manifestation of of the supernatural hallelujah it's very very important the early church in fact the coming of the holy ghost when you read acts chapter 2 and verse 1 the bible says now when the day of pentecost was fully come that they were gathered together in one accord suddenly there was a sound from heaven just like it happened in ezekiel 37 and the bible says that the Holy Spirit came, filled the room, and they saw cloven tongues as of fire. It came and rested upon every single one of them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And the people on the day of Pentecost gathered and said, don't mind these people, they are drunk with new wine. And Peter got up to preach the first sermon and he said, no, we are not drunk. This is but the morning hour. He said but this is that he began to make reference to prophet joel he began to make reference to david and he said let it be known to you that the same jesus whom you have crucified has today been exalted as lord and christ the bible says when they heard him preach under the influence of the spirit they were caught to their heart and they said men and brethren what shall we do peter replies and says repent for the remission of your sins and then you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and to your children to your children's children as many as are far off by the agency of the supernatural three thousand people were saved in one day is someone learning so for many of us we have reduced the supernatural to just falling down and shouting and so once you are not in the fivefold ministry or you perceive that you are not into this pentecostal thing we just close our hearts to the supernatural solutions i hope you know that ministry is also dispensing value it's just that your value is spiritual in context the world is too busy and too contemporary for people to come and invest their time and attention when there is no guarantee that they will be blessed so there are many well-meaning people pastors evangelists apostles even there are many sincere people in ministry who have ignored the supernatural and then there are others who in a bid to pursue the supernatural they have veered off the scriptural pathway. Listen carefully. I think this is where the bigger error is in the body of Christ now. Because a few people are forcefully coming into an appreciation that, listen, if I do not have the supernatural at work in my life, especially in ministry, chances are excellent that I may just be talking to empty pews. Chances are excellent that I may not be able to thrive in ministry. So in the blind pursuit for the supernatural, many have not followed divine patterns and have now begun to double themselves into extra biblical practices all in a bid for power you have all shades of all shades of extra biblical practices today unfortunately happening in the body of christ desperation for power people have gone to places done things offered sacrifices fraternized with demon spirits 
all because of the desperation to sustain the power to heal the prophetic power the ability to be able to minister to people let me recall once again what i told you when i started teaching that the moment the word of god is out of that equation the moment the ministry of the holy spirit is not honored and the moment christ is not revealed through that process it is diabolic it is witchcraft it is not of christ the necessary and sufficient condition for any spiritual occurrence to be called godly we have to vet from the authority of scripture number one we must see the supremacy of the word the word of god gaining supremacy there number two we must see honor to the ministry of the holy spirit i told you the holy spirit is not the only spirit that sponsors the supernatural when moses threw his rod by the spirit and it became a serpent pharaoh summoned for janus and jambas and by divination they threw their rods too and it also became a serpent it is true that all power belongs to god the bible already says it without argument he said once have i spoken and twice have you heard that all power belongs to god but you see the dynamics of accessing power in the spirit is such that any spirit has an advantage to be able to access a measure of power any spirit including a human spirit the moment you are a spirit there is a privilege given to you to access certain dimensions of power but the highest level of spiritual power according to scripture resides within the office of the holy spirit he is called the power of the highest not the lowest the power of the highest are we together yes by the determination of a human spirit you can tap into realms beyond the natural realm this is why many religions they train you you can use your mind you can use your human will and access all kinds of things you see it practiced in many religions by by the the, the dexterity of your meditation you can create fire you can create all kinds of possibilities once you are a spirit there are dimensions of power that you can tap when you fraternize with demon spirits like it happens with herbalists and all of those kinds of people you can now access certain levels of power but let me tell you authentic power that glorifies Jesus only comes as a product listen carefully the power of the believer is a product of relationship you see when you go to a herbalist you don't need to know his name he doesn't need to know your name you don't need to know his tribe a relationship is not necessary all you need to go is get there and say baba i'm in trouble what are you looking for i need money or i need a political office are you ready for the sacrifice yes which child are you going to bring or which chicken or which cow okay i have it here keep my own honorarium for me here and you drop everything and you can leave that place not even knowing the name of the man not even knowing where you went to you just know that you entered a forest that looked like you were entering the valley of the shadow of death and then suddenly you appeared in a man's shrine because when it has to do with demonical operations relationship is not required but when you come to the faith life the first thing god demands is follow me then i will make you you don't follow it you follow me are we together so it is intimacy with the holy spirit the first thing you receive you receive power after that the holy ghost is come so the holy ghost comes first in your walking with him in his building you among the many things that begin to be formed in your life through intimacy and the pursuit of the spirit is power many believers do not want to go through the labor of intimacy with the holy spirit and so we have routed all kinds of strategies to quickly get power in isolation to the spirit you stand a risk every time you take the holy ghost out of your entire power equation any spirit can carry the similitude of the holy spirit there are many people today who have dappled into activities of witchcraft not because they were bad people they themselves do not know that the influence that sponsors their prophetic power and the rest is demonic because it was not a product of genuine intimacy with the holy spirit i do not trust the dispensing of power from your life 
till I see your honor to the word of God and your press for the Holy Spirit. If I do not find these things at work in your life, I have a right from scripture to suspect the authenticity of what comes out from you. In every culture and in every village, there are people who generally they seem to come with a natural prophetic inclination. Is that true in your village? Where you see a young boy who begins to prophesy like that. Now, those things may not necessarily be wrong. Others, it may be a, in some cases, it may be a product of demonic covenants that that child is, is enjoying from. He came from a lineage of priesthood and by on the strength of covenants that predated his arrival, he just find, found out that those covenants have inclined him towards hearing and seeing. Number two, it can be that person is truly called to be a prophet of God. And by reason of that prophetic wiring, it is already easy for that person to begin to tap into spiritual things even before coming to the consciousness of that call. He spoke to the young boy Jeremiah in chapter 1 from verse 5. He says, right from when you were in your mother's womb, I called you out, I sanctified and ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. And he was speaking to the young boy. And later when we get to verse 10 or thereabout, he says, what seest thou? What do you see? He was talking to a young boy. He expected him to see. I have put a prophetic inclination in you. I have set you before nations to uproot, to tear down. Then he told him in verse 10 now, I believe, what do you see? Or verse 11. And he said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Verse 12 says, you have seen correctly. I will hasten my word that you have seen to perform it. Amplified says, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. Hallelujah. Should we desire the supernatural? Absolutely. As a preacher? Yes, sir. As a business person? Yes, sir. What is the advantage of the supernatural? accelerated results every time you tap into the frequency of the supernatural there must be acceleration of anything the bible says the hand of the lord came upon elijah is that in your bible and the bible says by reason of that supernatural advantage that he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab even down to jezreel the presence of the supernatural will always bring acceleration but ultimately you see the supernatural becomes for you a tool of efficiency as far as being um, contributing to kingdom come is concerned and then being a blessing to people by the privilege of God's grace I have watched with my eyes and I have seen sometimes almost to the point of tears I have seen what the supernatural has done and has brought to people supernatural solutions we're having a word very briefly with pastor in the office and he was just sharing with me about someone who uh, when he traveled overseas for administration a doctor who had cancer and the spirit of god just spoke through him and one communication and that was the end of it now you see the supernatural many of you here i presume are medical practitioners and just using the tool of medicine alone you know how it's almost a death sentence when you are diagnosed with cancer I have watched with my own eyes and have seen the manifestation of the power of God by reason of the advantage of the supernatural supernatural brings ease ease of anything ease in ministry because you see when you can prove the authenticity of the gospel by the manifestation of the supernatural there are many many manipulations that don't need to happen again the supernatural can compel partnership to your life even as a man of god people want to give but they want to make sure they are giving to what is real and what stands there are many people suffering a lot of the absence of partnership even in ministry today because they are not able to provide the kind of solution that makes people to feel they are giving to you were worth it. Someone will refuse to give you 50,000 and yet tell someone else, I have two acres of land for you because my daughter was healed through your life and ministry. Let this be my contribution. You see, 
you were never designed to do ministry without the assistance of the supernatural even jesus told the disciples who he had so laboriously mentored for a period of three and a half years he said even though you have the message tarry in jerusalem until you are endued with power if you allow the zeal of the message to drive you alone you will be disappointed tarry until tarry until in acts chapter 4 and verse 33 give it to us please acts 4 33 the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord and great grace was upon them all with great power not with great stories paul was speaking and he said when i came to you he said i did not come with the excellency of speech but with the demonstration of power so that your faith will not rest on Sophia, the wisdom of men, but upon the power of God. Many inventions in the body of Christ today have come sadly as substitutes and testaments of the bankruptcy of authentic, genuine power. When the power of God is not there, we will have to invent many things to try to whet the appetite of the people. Because you see, when people come to church, do not, do not make a mistake. Uh, people may be laughing when they are in church, but you have no idea. The pain, the trouble, the death sentences, the medical reports, all kinds of things that people have. When they sit in church and they are dancing, they are dancing in hope that God will show up somewhere in the course of that service and solve their problems. And let me tell you, when they give you a chance with their lives and it does not look like you have a clue as to the dynamics of power to solve their problems, they will respect you but they will leave. And sadly, there are many viable alternatives in the world right now. Is someone learning? I made up my mind when God called me I said I do not want to be the kind of preacher that becomes bitter, angry and jealous simply because of the bankruptcy of results in my life. I made up my mind under God that as he grants me grace, I will stay and stay and tarry until genuine power comes from heaven. I cried to God and I said, do not send me with a message alone. No, it takes more than being a lecturer to bring transformation. The Bible tells us that when you stand to speak to people, there are two laws that are working in their lives. One is the law of sin and death. The other is the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus. Do you know what it means to open your mouth and make declarations and open up the destinies of men? It takes more than a sincere heart. It takes the power of God. You see, when the power of God is at work in your life, there is no pretending it. The power of God is like light. Neither do men light a lamp. Once it is lit, you cannot put it under a bushel. I have traveled from nation to nation. I have traveled from region to region. I have watched with my own eyes the wonder-working power of God. The power to heal. The power to deliver. The power to shift the climate of nations. This is what the Lord wants to grant you access to. Please hear me. You are a man of God and you came here. You have been laboring and crying. Let me honestly admit to you why ministry is not working. I know you still need to learn a little of administration. Nothing deflates the potential for growth in ministry like the bankruptcy of power. There are many other things you can learn on the go. When power is there, people will even come to partner with you to teach you and support other things that are not there. You, success in ministry is a composite of many things but make sure among the missing ingredients power should not be one of them mm -mm. maybe you don't have a proper understanding of administration as far as a contemporary society is concerned once you are a humble man of God and power is present people will come and supplement for that weakness but no matter what else you have if there is no power sooner or later you will find out that even if you buy a new fridge and it's not connected it is still dead you can buy a new fridge or a new television celebrate the newness but don't connect it people will sit down at the cinema and be wondering 
sooner they will tell you i am tired of this new thing i know you bought it from an original lg shop but i need to watch it i need it to cool my water you claim that your fridge is new you claim it was white the aesthetics the, everything is beautiful but it is not solving the problem jesus saw a fig tree the problem was not the leaves it had the beauty and the excellence but the fruit that will bless the people it did not have it and jesus cursed it you are deceiving people you are wasting time by the flamboyancy of excellence you attract people but when they come there is no substance listen to me i am a product of power i believe in the power of the holy spirit the Bible says in Psalm 66 and verse 3, it says, say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Not through the greatness of your discussion. You want to command an exodus for the people of God? Ladies and gentlemen, it will take more than English, believe me. It will take more than administrative prowess. It will take more than oratory and theological accuracy. Those things are wonderful. But when all is said and done, there are spirits that hold the destinies of men. There are causes that tie the destinies of men. Paul said, I desire to come to you. Even I, Paul, once and again, he said, but Satan hindered us. I have met wonderful people. When, when a woman comes to meet you and says, I am healthy. They check me, my womb is healthy, everything is fine, but I cannot have a child. She does not need counseling. What kind of counseling are you going to give that kind of person? I am healthy. In fact, I am a medical practitioner myself. When a man comes to tell you, I refuse bribery, I have been a diligent person, but every time my project is about to scale through i go to sleep in the night and a stranger walks up to me and said the same way i crushed your father i will do same and he gets up in the morning and the destiny helper who should help him says i i can't remember i can't remember inviting you to my office walk away you think that person is looking for a discussion That you meet a family with untimely death patterns of evil every year somebody must die now they come to you and say pastor you claim you are a witness from jesus will you allow my remaining children die we are 11 now we are four left everyone has died it takes more than counseling someone shout power say it again shout power Listen, I come from a region where it is not easy and natural to rise from your lowly estate to a global standpoint. No, there are territorial horns that sit upon the destinies of men. They define the boundary of your growth. Once you cross a particular threshold, they say, thus far have you come. Some of you are like that and you are taking your life casual. You are watching that you are not rising. Even those who have gone ahead of you, they went up and came down. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. It says through the greatness of thy power. Listen, even when it has to do with the ministry of prosperity, you see, it takes value and favor and all of those things to have resources. But the Bible says strong men retain wealth. Retaining wealth takes more than intellect. It takes power. Do you believe what you are hearing? Mama, if you do not access power, 
the devil will rubbish your children one by one and children who should be prophets will become armed robbers prostitutes and hooligans just because of the bankruptcy of power you are a man you are a father and the devil is making nonsense out of your family if you access power from heaven one night when they are all sleeping you wear your priestly and prophetic regalia and begin to walk around your house sanitize your spiritual climate say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways through the greatness of thy power hallelujah listen to me the bible talks about jesus the son of the living god number one jesus was and is the word as the word incarnate when he came to the earth even though being the word it was not enough for him to be successful in ministry number two jesus encountered three prophets in his life who spoke over him one simeon the prophet two anna the prophetess three john the baptist and even at that, it still was not enough for him to excel in ministry. Listen carefully. Jesus submitted himself to mentorship. From age 12, he was in the temple learning the ropes of the law. Still, it was not enough for him. The Bible says when John brought him out of water, listen, the heavens opened. Is that true? And the spirit descended upon him. Still, it was not enough for him to do ministry. He went to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And your Bible says he returned in the power of the spirit. The power of the spirit. When he returned in the power of the spirit. Many signs. In one day his fame spread abroad. Let me tell you ladies and gentlemen. Hear me. You do not compel the attention of a generation by telling them stories. They have heard many of the things you are saying. The factor that compels is the power of God. He said for where the carcasses are, there the eagles will gather. It is not the location of your church. I don't believe that. It is not the state you are located in. I don't believe that. Is that there is no fire enough. There is no power enough. Genuine apostolic and prophetic power. It will draw men from the length and the breadth of the globe to come and see what God is doing. Listen to me. For more than a decade, with all due respect, I was in Zaria. For many of you who know Zaria, that, that, is, that, is, that is the center of Islamic activities. And people were coming from around the world, even with kidnapping. They will still endure from Lagos, fly to Abuja, take a golf and inconvenience themselves. If they will kidnap me, let them kidnap me, but let me get there. Not the best of hotel facilities. When people see genuine power, they will endure anything. I know you don't have AC yet. I know you don't have this yet. I know your sound system is not the best yet. People will forgive you a thousand times if they can have the consolation of power. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Don't do ministry without power. No, you will waste your time. Listen. I'm, I'm, I'm about to pray for you. There is, there is a volcano that is tearing up in this place this morning. Because for someone, listen, it's time for that mandate and that mantle. You have been carrying it, but there is no power. That's why God kept prohibiting you from starting a church. Prohibiting you from traveling for ministration. So that you don't embarrass yourself and bring reproach to the name of the Lord. Now hear me, when I started ministry, when God called me, I started seeing a measure of the power of God in my life. 
But I cried to God. I said, Lord, this is not enough. With the assignment you have shown me, there needs to be a display of your power to the nations. You are confronting people who are already familiar with spiritual activities. Some of them are herbalists themselves. Some of them are diviners themselves. Some of them are, it is not new. And I said, Lord, you must grant me access to this power. I remember studying God's generals, studying several people. I remember studying the story of A.A. A. Allen, who said he went to lock himself in the room and said, I am not coming out. He said, oh God, grant me genuine power from heaven. And God gave him seven instructions that if he kept, he would access power from heaven. The disciples thought it was just by a sincere heart. And they gathered around somebody who had a deaf and dumb spirit. And they labored for nothing and could not heal that person. When Jesus returned, they said, Master, why couldn't we do this? The bankruptcy of power has made many genuine people look fake. The bankruptcy of power has pushed many people with the purity of heart to the corridors of compromise. Because now you do not have the people who have been blessed by your life to support what you are doing. So you will have to now start playing games and cutting corners to raise funds and all these kinds of things. Is this not a reed that has been forged out of fire? Can I tell you, the Bible says he makes his angels wings and his ministers flames. No matter how mad a man is, that man does not enter fire by mistake. Even though he's mad, when he gets to fire, he knows the difference. Listen, I came here this morning just to charge you on the supernatural. I, it would be a costly assumption to assume that everybody here is tired of that natural realm. But I know there are people for sure who are saying, Lord, for the sake of my generation, for the sake of the mandate upon my life, you have called me as a financial apostle. You have called me as a prophet to the nations. You have called me as a Deborah. You have called me as an Esther. If you deny me access to power, you have denied me access to that which sponsors the possibilities in my life. Listen to me. According to scripture, there are two ways to receive power. Two ways. Number one, is by a direct encounter with the God of the Bible. When people have a direct encounter with the God of the Bible, among the many things they receive is power. The second way, which is a lot more generic, Impartation is the system of power built within the economy of the body for spiritual possibilities to be transferred from person to person. He said, the, how did he put it now? The Lord sent a word to Jacob and it lightened upon Israel. Apostle Paul was speaking to the church in Philippi and he said, ye all are partakers of my grace. When a man has been so endowed by the spirit, within the leadership, the boundary of the leadership of the spirit, you are at liberty to allow from that which you have received to flow freely to those who genuinely desire to receive. Even though there are rules of reception, Number one, you must believe in the God that empowered that person. Number two, you must believe in the person and the office of that man of God. It's a he that receives a prophet in the name as touching that office. You can receive a prophet in the name of your husband. Nothing will flow to you. That's what the man of God was sharing here. He said when he's in church, help them please. When you are in church, he told his wife, he said, I am your pastor. When we get home, you are in charge. That is family life.
You've heard me say, I am a product of many anointings. I can spend the whole day telling you stories upon stories, moments of prophetic encounters in my life, and it has not stopped till tomorrow. I can tell you many graces in my life and where they came from. The prophetic, the miraculous, the grace for influence, wealth, whatever it is. These graces are not just for the benefit of the man of God. The gifts of the spirit is for us to profit with that. Hear me. For someone you are here and you are sincerely called, but I'm telling you prophetically, the missing link is that you have not accessed power from on high. And the days that are coming, I'm telling you this, I'm not a bearer of bad news, but many pastors are going to have to be forced to close down their churches. Because people will say, I love you, I respect you, I've been with you for 10 years faithfully, my life has not changed. As much as I love you, I'm thinking about the destiny and the future of my children too. I will have to leave. That is the truth. The reason why we seem to have the manifestation of superstar Christianity as I call it is because many people have refused to pay the price with the spirit to access power. So the few people who have now contended and carried power, they supposedly look like superstars apostle joshua selman it is god's desire that as many they did not say for that promise is unto you and to your children when you do not press to access power you make those who carry to be at a risk because they become an endangered species when the devil strike them there are no alternatives in the body it is not God's desire to have just one or two people represented across. Now, there is an election of grace where there are people who are called by reason of God's predeterminate counsel. But let me tell you, the least among us can still be as mighty as David. In the next five minutes, there is going to be a mighty impartation. Listen, you can choose to spectate and watch others. Or you can cry to your maker and say, Lord, if this is the moment, let this be a destiny encounter. Someone lift up your voice and in the next one minute, I don't know how you are going to cry to God. Listen to me i must tell you this before we begin this impartation whether you're on the ground whether you're kneeling just listen hear me can i tell you the purity of heart and the desire to glorify jesus is the biggest attractor of the power of god the purity of heart and the desire to glorify jesus not a desire for fame not a desire for competition let me have it too so i can prophesy like the rest let me have it too so no one will mock me the agenda of god is bigger than self-aggrandizement the purity of heart i repeat and the desire to see jesus glorified he said nevertheless the foundation of the lord standeth sure having this seal the Lord knoweth them that are his and let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity it says but in a great house there are vessels of gold and silver of wood and clay some vessels are unto honor and some vessels are unto dishonor it says if a man will pour
God himself that man will be a vessel unto honor meet for the master's use I want you to pray one prayer Lord purify my heart purify my heart edit my motives take away the secret desire for competition the secret desire to outshine the secret desire to trample on others the secret desire to be the only celebrity carrying power Lord take it out of my life purify my motive someone pray Someone pray. Someone pray. Hallelujah. Now, the power of God is coming. I want you to start bringing the people outside. I'm just seeing angelic manifestations right now. And I'm about to speak. There is an opening of the gates. Please, whether you are an usher or not, I want you to just bring those under the anointing here now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I'm seeing the spirit of revelation, access to light, the mysteries of the kingdom. Where are they? Let it come upon you like the dew of Hamon. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Receive that mantle. Take that grace. I release you. Hold that place so they don't enjoy themselves. Receive that grace. I empower you by that mantle. The eyes that see, the ears that hear. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, fire upon your life. Let your eyes be washed with eyes out that you may see. Shalagata bakata bakata praskata kash. Kratekata beretos koto basiata. Now I'm praying. Please, I want you to listen. Bring them out. There are people here. One of the end time mantles that is going to be restored to the church is authentic healing ministry. The healing ministry with power that heals. And I sense that there are people here. Some of you have been praying and fasting. Please bring them out. I stretch my hands. That mantle to heal. Take the healing power of Jesus to the nations. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Men and women like Catherine Pullman. Men and women like every simple McPherson. We reignite that apostolic fire, that revival to heal the sick, to heal the sick, to heal the sick, to heal the sick. Hallelujah. Now hear me. This is a prophetic ministry. Your father is a prophet. And there are many of you who are connected to this vision. But that prophetic mantle has been hovering around you. But it has not landed in your life. I want to release that grace. I believe there are people here who will begin to walk in strange levels of the prophetic. Can I release that mantle upon you? Father, I don't know where they are in this crowd and watching. Everyone called into the prophetic office, the prophetic ministry. I stretch my hands right now. Receive that grace now. Take that abakataka take that grace now. Men and women, drink of the prophetic fountain. Help this lady, please. 
drink of the prophetic fountain. Please help us in the name of Jesus. I stir up that prophetic grace. I stir up that prophetic grace. Spring up all wells. Spring up all prophetic wells. Spring up all prophetic wells. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is like him, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne, mountains bow down, every ocean roll to the king of kings. We will praise our From the rising of the sun to the end of every day, praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth. Is there a name like Diolu? Diolu, is it Diolu or something? Who is Diolu? Come. Shalis Kariko Sabranda Katoshka Vredi Emele. What do you do, sir? You are a pastor. I want to pray for you because the Lord is saying the limitation you have seen in ministry that is about to take it away as a reproach. Take that reproach away. I pray for you, sir. I do not know you, but in the name of Jesus, may the hand of God rest upon you. Take that grace right now. A new season by the Spirit of the Living God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Who is, um, I'm hearing my name. You're my namesake, Joshua. Please make sure you don't run. Let's, we have just a few minutes. I'm, I'm working on extra time. So make sure you don't tell lies. Just come and stand here. You will receive. Bring the person who shouts right now. A loud shout. Loud shout. You are Joshua. I want to pray for you. What is your name, my friend? Help this boy. Huh? What's his name? This gentleman. Your name is Joshua. Help this guy. I declare that the yoke of witchcraft and I'm, as I'm praying for him I'm praying for someone everything that has tied your life and limited you from advancing every altar I don't know who I'm speaking to but I'm seeing fire help this guy please help him so he doesn't injure people I decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus be delivered now name like Demola Demola you are wearing white Demola is there someone like that Demola who is that what is your name what do you do I want to pray for you um, you, are, you are destined for greatness but I'm seeing a serious limitation on your life in the name of Jesus I decree and declare be delivered right now be delivered right now be delivered right now help him be delivered right now there is a gentleman here you do uber is it uber or bolt who is that person i'm seeing somebody driving a car and the lord is saying i should pray for the person because there is an anointing that is coming you do uh, this um or what they call it now is there a gentleman like that who is that that's what you do no 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 i'm Please make sure, is, is that what you do? Because one of you, I'm seeing that you are going into real estate. 
God is going to bring somebody. He will start just by helping you. Somebody is saying, sell something. And yet, that's how God will help you and establish you in your destiny. I stretch my hands. May the grace that lifts and helps men rise. May that anointing come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will go and prosper by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing a lady here. Your elder sister is yet to have a child. Your elder sister is yet to have a child. This is what the Lord is revealing to me. Who is that person? Please come. The season has come. Your elder sister, where is she? In United Kingdom. Is that where she is? Where is she? That's what I'm saying. The Lord is saying her, her time has come. In the name of, if she's following or she, wherever she is, in the name of Jesus, we agree. We don't care what the medical situation is. If the Lord has spoken, an anointing is coming upon you for our own sake. Receive that grace now. Receive that anointing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I use her as a point of contact that everyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb, here at this convention, we decree and declare, may the God of all possibilities visit them. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, I want you two things, two supernatural miracles you are trusting God for. We release our faith under this corporate anointing. Open your mouth and begin to make that demand. And watch the God of all possibilities. Two impossible situations. Go ahead and pray. You just obey instructions. In the name of Jesus Christ, someone is praying. What is that that has mocked God in your life? You're trusting God to overturn. Is it a financial situation? A marital situation? An academic situation? A health situation? We stand by the privilege of priesthood and the prophetic. Releasing our faith with you. Make that petition unto God. He said, what things soever ye desire. When ye pray, believe that thou receivest it and thou shalt have it. He says to be anxious for nothing. But that in everything... By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving he said let your request be made known unto God pray ask the God of all possibilities visit me in this area change my story in this area wipe my tears give me a testimony in the name of Jesus give me a testimony visit my father visit my mother visit my wife my husband my children visit my family visit my ministry my business pray one more minute you are praying in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray I shared with you yesterday on the school of faith Ezekiel 37 he said son of man can these bones live again and he said only thou knowest and he said prophesy let me speak over your life the prophetic can be revelatory but the prophetic can be creative it can make what has no business happening to happen in the name of Jesus I stand in partnership with the grace upon the prophet of God in this house to declare over someone every door that has refused to open malice from this moment forward we declare that door open now shout a loud amen open now open now open now open now in the name of Jesus let me command restoration he said alas master for it was borrowed and he said where fell it there are many people who are in all kinds of situations in need of restoration by the power of the highest I speak to someone between now and the end of March I speak prophetically let there be supernatural restoration supernatural restoration supernatural restoration number three let me pray for you and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren but that was not his story 
the Bible says the mother cursed him as a result of her pain Jabez but he got to a point where he said oh that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast I want to pray for someone whatever has limited you in the name that is above all names be enlarged right now be enlarged right now I prophesy increase expand to the north expand to the east expand to the south expand to the west in the name of Jesus A man called Job, who was once the richest man in the east. The Bible says that man went down from grace to grass until he became an object of mockery. But in Job chapter 42 and verse 10, the Bible says, And God turned again the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And he said all his former acquaintances who had left him, they now began to return. And the Bible says everyone brought gifts and a piece of money. I declare whoever has left you, by reason of the tragedies that have come upon your life, I compel them to return with gifts. I compel them to return with favor. I compel them to return with favor. I compel them to return with favor. Two more impartations and we're done. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. Let me declare, there is a grace for favor. It compels men and systems to walk towards your progress. Wherever you are, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, let the grace for favor rest on you. Let the grace of favor rest on your business, rest on your ministry, rest on your family. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I want to pray for you. The Bible says, and the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. I want to rebuke the ugly spirit of untimely death that is sweeping from nation to nation, destroying great lives and great potentials. I hope you know that death is beyond the phenomenon. Death is a spirit. According to Revelation, the rider upon the pale horse holding a pair of balances on his hand and his name is death. Death is a spirit. More than just a natural occurrence. And that spirit like all other spirits can answer to the name of Jesus. Therefore I declare it says to deliver them who have been appointed unto death. Anyone here and any family that the devil is already programming that you will not see the end of 2023. Anyone here that in the realm of the spirit, it is almost like a done deal. I declare in the name of Jesus and by the power that raised Christ from the dead, the fullness of your days you will fulfill. The fullness of your days you will fulfill. You will not die, not by the sword, not by accident, not by plane crash, not by kidnapping, not by the activity of wicked men. The Lord preserves your going in, the Lord preserves your coming out in the name of Jesus. My final charge to you ladies and gentlemen before I leave is that your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ must remain intact in spite of. The Bible says, if our hope is only in this life, it says we are of all men most miserable. Listen very carefully, spare me a few seconds. It matters to Jesus and it matters to your destiny that your ways are right with God. It's a costly assumption to assume that out of the crowd of people here, there might be one or two persons or everybody is saved. I believe that in every meeting and in every gathering, you would always find people in need of Jesus or in need of rededication and restoration. There are people here who, whilst you heard me teach and whilst you saw the demonstration of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost began to speak to you to tell you it is time to make it right with Jesus. Perhaps you were invited this morning or for someone else, for you it is that your life has gone haywire and there is need for restoration. This is my last assignment this morning. I want to lend my voice with the man of God and 
pray for you wherever you are I'm going to count one to three you should know by now there's nothing to be ashamed of there's nothing to be afraid of this is a very holy spiritual atmosphere that you should not waste apostle I truly want to make it right with Jesus no pretense I count one to three leave your seat and come and stand here one let's celebrate them as they come you don't have to kneel just stand for space two Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Can I join them? Join them. Quickly. Join them. Three. Someday, when this life is over, the Bible says, and so we believe that Jesus is returning. And when he does return, like he will, it is not going to be the degrees and the certificates or your travel exposure or the kind of money in your bank account there will be only one credential if you have been joined with his spirit through the experience of the new birth and then rewarding the works of men based on their faithful service listen to me ladies and gentlemen it matters that we make the issue of soul winning if you're a pastor here listen soul winning is not a once in a while thing Many people do not make altar calls because they don't want to look powerless. What if I make an altar call and nobody comes? That's why nobody comes. Because God knows you are not determined enough to go beyond your ego and see people saved. You must be born again. It's a mandate, a command, not a suggestion. I salute all of you who are here. Some of you are crying. There's nothing to be ashamed of. And for someone who is following online, from any nation you might be connecting from or maybe you are watching by way of rebroadcast it is never too late to make it right with Jesus never too late never too late anything minus Jesus equals to death anything minus Jesus equals to defeat and eventual failure so I celebrate all of you for making this noble decision may I please request that you lift your right hand above your head as a sign of surrender and say this after me mean it from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus I have heard your voice I have heard your word I love you with all my heart I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, and of the grave is broken over my life. From today and forever, I am a child of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. You are able to save even to the uttermost and I thank you because by the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is destroyed over your life. I empower you to live victorious Christian lives from today. No going back. In Jesus name I pray. Amen and amen. Now you will be given a form. You would notice that the counselors are giving you a form. Whether you are rededicating your life to Jesus or making a first time decision, please you will be requested to fill it legibly. Are they going anywhere or back to their seats? Okay, so here's what will happen. Please do cooperate with them. Just a minute or two and you would rush back to your seat. You'll be led. Please follow the counselor waving his hands. You will be led to a room where you just have a word or two and you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them. Pastor, thank you so very much. Thank you so much. May God bless you and increase you in Jesus' name. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, 
that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 